Hey, what's up guys? E, Rivera94, back with another action figure review. And today we are looking at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Special Missions Cobra Island Target Exclusive Alvin Breaker Kibby with Ram Cycle. Quite a mouthful there, but this is number 29 in the Classified Series, or I should say AKA Target Exclusive Series of G.I. Joe 6 inch Hasbro figures. This is a Deluxe set, we have a motorcycle and we have an action figure retailing at $40, um, only at Target for the US. I always see these packs as $20 for the figure and $20 for the motorcycle, so it's pretty darn fair price if you ask me. Looks like we're getting a motorcycle that we haven't gotten before. It's not a retool, or remold, or anything. I think it's a brand new sculpt for a cycle, so that's exciting as well. So here is the front of the package. The side art is kind of hard to show, but there it is. In the back art is the Cobra Island map that we've been seeing in the back of all these Cobra Island Target exclusives. And here's a good look at Breaker and his Ram cycle out of package. First impressions, pretty good. Looks good. You're pretty straightforward, standard G.I. Joe classified 6 inch figure. The cycle itself comes with a couple of accessories and we get one accessory for the actual figure. And that accessory is a helmet with a visor and a little microphone there. Um, very nice, very cool. We'll see how that looks on the figure in a second. And for the cycle, we get a big old Gatlin gun, which I guess he could hold in his hands too, so this can count for himself too. But you can also attach it to this piece here, which has a little, little wheel there on the bottom. And two pegs on the other side where you can peg it into the cycle itself. So it comes apart in the middle there, and then you can slide it in the Gatling gun, close it within, and there you have it. So now you have the gun on the side of the bike. Well, it's not on the side yet. Let's take a closer look at the details first. We get USA printed on the uh, bottom there. We get the number 36 at the top in red, and that's it. Everything else is just a molded green plastic, and then the... Uh, the little wheel there is a little gray plastic. No paint details on the gun itself, it's just all black. Um, let's take a look at the bike real quick. We get some printing on here too. The bike says MG1027. To get the star printed there too, we got the number 36 up top. There's a little blue circle there with like a castle looking thing. Not sure what that stands for, but I'm sure a smarty pants will let me know in the comments. Let me know down below. Uh, there is a American flag printed on this side too and I do like that they painted the uh, you know it's not a hundred percent painted but we get a little silver paint there makes a difference in my opinion this could have all been black like they always do but they, they put the little silver there and the black so it looks a little better than just having it not painted they even painted the little chain here so that's even cool you know for me on the back we get some more printing here on this side so we can see here that this reads instrument cover. We get another um, printing here of a wrench. And then we have more paint. MG 1027, G.I. Joe on this side. The other side does not say G.I. Joe, but this one does. Then also what I've noticed is that um, this bike, you really don't see the metal screws. Uh, normally one side of the bike will always show screws, but it looks like they covered it. Uh, with the design here, we get one screw right here, kind of visible, but it's covered by this exhaust here, so it's not too bad. I'll take it compared to what we used to get. Um, I used to have to only display the bike facing, you know, with the screws behind it, so you could never see those annoying looking screws. But this time around, uh, you could do both sides, but I think I prefer the G.I. Joe side. Anyways, we get a little plastic window here on the front. The gauges are also painted there so that's cool. And then the tires are like a very hard rubberish plastic so that's cool. But you can see all the details in the rims there and the wheel. And then these are the two peg holes where you are going to slot in the gun on the side of the bike. And there you go there's a quick look at the uh, the gun mounted on the side of the bike here and of course it's standing up because i got the kickstand on there and you can move that away and then it'll also stand up without it but you got to have this side piece on because now that side piece will hold the bike up just fine it'll act as a stand so i kind of dig that uh, if you don't use it though 
obviously it's not gonna stand on its own without the uh, kickstand so you'll have to use that to have it standing straight up and then there's a quick look at breaker with his helmet accessory on looks pretty dope it fits on like a glove fits on perfectly i'm surprised that they found a way to get this to fit on naturally with this you know hair scope that they got going on here but they managed to uh, find a way so here's a look a closer look at breaker with the helmet on that looks so good i think i might have him with the helmet on when i display him but you can easily slide it off and that unveils his face and his hair sculpt Pretty dope. I think it looks uh, pretty good in my opinion. There's the back. It's a good, good sculpt overall. Good paint. Face looks good. And then here's a closer shot at the torso. See all the texture there on the torso, on the straps, on the little, you know, pouches he's got there. He's got a little peg hole on the back. This is a vest piece. And then going down to the uh, thighs and the boots. One thing I did notice on mine, unfortunately, if you look at this forearm, now compared to this one, you see how this one received like 20 coats of paint, and this one looks like it only got two or one. It has some green showing on mine on the forearm, and it needs a couple more coats of that skin tone paint, so they don't match, unfortunately. It kind of bugs me a little bit, but it is what it is. Can't do anything about it. All right, so here's a look at him on the actual bike itself. Now, the uh, footrest has pegs for the peg holes on the feet, but the peg holes are on the heels. So I tried to attach his feet to the peg holes to, you know, kind of make it seem like, oh, that's how it's meant to be on the bike. But it looks a little, I don't know. Would you ride a motorcycle like this? I don't know, because normally the legs are, are more further back. But uh, this is what it looks like. It doesn't look too bad like that. Of course, you don't have to use those peg holes. He'll sit on there just fine. But it uh, looks pretty cool. So there he is without the helmet. And now with the helmet, that just completes the whole look. Definitely looks better with the helmet, especially when he's on the ram cycle itself. So I'm digging it. And now here is the Gatling gun on the side of the motorcycle with him on the motorcycle. Also, worth noting that you can spin the actual barrels of the gun while it's in there as well. So this spins. Only missing some effects, that would have been cool. But that's it. There's your full look. That's everything this whole entire package comes with. Um, all together here and everything rolls pretty good. So Now one of the things I do feel like he's lacking is a sidearm or just a smaller gun for himself. He does have trigger finger hands. So as you can see, he can hold a gun with no problem. This is just a weapon I got from my accessory bin. I really don't know where this gun came from, but... Um, it fits on pretty well and it looks good. If he had a pistol, something, you know, like this, a smaller gun, would be cool to have him posed up next to the bike. Um, so, if you have anything lying around, it will work with the figure. Just wish it was packed in. And then also you can have him hold the big old Gatling gun in his hands just fine. So, that's a good look too. Alright, so when it comes to the articulation of Breaker, we have a ball jointed hinge. You can see the hinge there. So the head will look up pretty far and he looks down as far as his beard allows him to so about that far right there the neck is also articulated so you can see the neck does move and rotate so that gives it some more range for the head arms gonna go all the way around forward and back in and out all the way up all the way down we get the butterfly joints there at the shoulders bicep swivel double jointed elbows with pins we have swivel at the wrist and a hinge torso would have a Ab crunch, but it's being blocked by that vest that he is wearing, and it is non removable unless you snap it off or cut it off. So, I don't think you want to do that. So, you don't really get to use that ab crunch. Now, you would think that you would need that ab crunch since he has to be sitting on a motorcycle, but actually, as we saw earlier, you don't really need it to accomplish a pretty decent sitting pose. The legs do all the work here, and the waist. So, the waist is on a ball joint. So that goes forward and back, swivels left and right. Legs will kick forward there, the drop down legs. So that is wonderful for a vehicle. Kicks forward, goes back in and out, look full split. And then of course, when you get down to this, it looks weird, but you gotta pop it back up. There you go. Thigh swivel, double jointed pinned knees. 
Then we got a boot cut, shin swivel, ankle hinge forward and back, ankle rocker at the foot right there. Now as for the articulation of the bike, the uh, wheels spin both sides. The handlebars are actually on a little ball joint so that moves around like this. That goes for both and of course if you turn it just like a real bike would, it turns the front wheel. So I like how that works together like a real bike. So there you have it. Of course we got the hinge on the uh, kickstand down at the bottom there. And to start off the height comparisons, I'll put him next to the more recently released G.I. Joe classified figures. And it is the movie figures from the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie. So first we have Baroness here. Right, and then we have Snake Eyes himself. And then here is Storm Shadow. Right, and here is our original series 1 Snake Eyes. And then our more recently released Target exclusive, here is Major Blood. Up next we have Beachhead. And here we have him next to Flint. Then here is a comparison of the Baroness coil cycle next to the Ram cycle. So these are our only two vehicles, our only two motorcycles released thus far for the G.I. Joe Classified series. So this makes Breaker the second uh, deluxe release, I guess you should say, or call it. Not counting the Snake Eyes with Timber, but, you know, the second vehicle G.I. Joe release. So... I am just very curious on how far they'll take this because obviously we want jeeps, we want tanks, we want everything that we can get. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll see where they take us with this line. Alright guys, and that's going to wrap things up on this review of the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Special Missions Cobra Island Target Exclusive Breaker with Ram Cycle. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, show some love down below by leaving a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, everybody, take care, and have a great day. Bye. That's crispy.